But unfortunately, we got some bad news. It looks like Bill Real backed out. Yes. But we made there was a meme. Yeah. And at Wait, first, Zelf and the Shelf backed out. Too? Oh yeah. Stop backing out. Don't be a wimp. You need to be tough. If you have been saying for years, going after people, calling them dishonest, calling them uh, bullies, all number of things, and saying that they don't have the courage to actually debate you, and you back out for obscure reasons that don't hold up to muster, that's not doing your audience a service either because you are also claiming to be this like a big and brave and saying Mormonism is problematic and X, Y, and Z. Speaking and apologists truth are power. Yes, and- you're, a tr- you're, you're a truth seeker and apologists are dishonest, all of these things. And when they in- extend an invite to a debate moderated by someone impartial to both of our sides and you back out because of obscure I- reasons that don't hold up to muster, that shows dishonesty and you're not treating your audience fairly either because they want this debate to happen. All right, welcome back to Midnight Mormons. I am your host, Carden Ellis, with Barad Whitbeck and Kwaku L. The show is Midnight Mormons. We got a little bit of an update uh, here about our, um, I don't know, I don't like calling it a debate. I don't know what you want to call it, but unfortunately we got some bad news. It looks like Bill Real backed out of our debate here, and uh, his boy Radio Free Mormon wants to debate us solo Mm-hmm. Uh, I overheard some of the conversation, but it was mostly uh, Brad, you, Brad, and Kwaku. Give us an update. What's going on? Because I, I don't, I don't know how this sits with me quite yet. So, for what it's worth, I think that RFM just wants to debate us by himself. Um, I don't know why. But I, I think it's because he he did say because anyone else would slow him down, right? Well, yeah, but that so. was after because I told him I said no. I think Bill Real has the right to be there. And, you know, that's how this whole thing started, was him demanding an audience with that crazy email that got sent to like Terrell and Fiona Givens. And we totally made fun of and laughed at, right? But at the same time, I'm a free speech purist. And I think if a man is impugned, he has the right to defend himself. It's a whole idea of habeas corpus that our entire judicial system is based off of. And so, you know, there was this big challenge and counter challenge and so on and so forth. But then now we hear from the phone conversation that we had, I heard it saying he does not want to participate. Yeah, so um, so based on what Bill told me, and he used kind of the excuse that is, it's the it's this weird excuse that's not a, it's not a real excuse, but he was like, my my audience is too big, it's only giving you attention because Midnight Mormons is so small. Um, it was like a weird like because the channel is new, but Stone 16's audience is bigger than theirs, right? Um, I I don't know. I we we've got videos that have far more views. Yeah, but this um, is like also so pathetic, guys. It's this like is a we- niche content where the biggest podcaster of Mormonism, you know what I'm saying, is John Dillon, who only has like forty thousand subs. I mean, Taylor Swift farts, and she gets forty thousand oh subs. Okay, yeah, it's a so weird I mean, like the, he like. Uh, I, well, again, remember, understand. No one here is big. Right. The, the whole and maybe the that's whole, just be, like the I whole field all, is small. Yeah. The whole idea, like the whole yeah. Mormon podcasting field, is small. Um, so I don't know. It's like, he's like, I'm so we're like, we're, we're just too big for you guys. I'm like, well, you weren't too big to comment on almost everything we've done with this is the show and with, with midnight Mormons. And I, I've seen your views like midnight Mormons is a new channel. Our, our, our end of John Dillon video, my debate with Aaron, all those things have got equal amount, if not more than what you're doing. Literally have, a, having MAGA Hulk call out John Dillon. Yeah. Racist. I'm like, what you, like yeah, we've got, true. it's like a weird false thing he made up, but it was also it was I was the most insecure email I've ever received because he basically went through it and pulled all of his numbers and he the, the whole message was the reason I have worth is because of how many people subscribe and download Aww. and it was it was really really sad because I'm like dude your whole idea of self worth is based I, off now the is fact. that what the RFM guy that. said or is that no what this was Bill Real Bill Real okay so so then who took Bill Real out of this equation from my understanding he took himself out he, he took himself out yes. He took himself out. Um, I is will that s- written somewhere? So when these people come after us and say X, Y, or Z I, thing. I think so. Uh, RFM posted on his Facebook page, which is where he's posting everything about this. Um, I think to get all of his audience aware of it and to help like keep track of what's happening as it goes. 
he said that Bill Real will not be um, debating with him as a partner there. So um, did he get kicked out? Like, he, is the RFM guy just kicking him out? I don't or know. Is he, he saying, um, well, I, first he didn't specify why. Yeah, there, there's no. He, he didn't. RFM did not specify why. And the reality is, I mean, Bill and I have a have a very tough relationship. So the first interaction I ever had with Bill is, remember what I read to you guys? On, Dude, on these guys episode. did an entire podcast saying that no, we're yeah. a bunch of dangerous individuals. They've attacked a- left and right. with John DeLynn. Yeah. So it's like, we all have a tough relationship on this. This is why it's called a debate. And this is why we agree to the place, we agree to the format, and we agree to the time. Yeah, they essentially, Bill has like thrown a million insults at us, a lot at me. We've thrown insults back. It's just the way it is. And he's now backed out. Right, he he is backed out and um, does not. But remember, initially this whole challenge is because they were saying nobody would ever come on. I went on, we reviewed it. People thought they didn't do a good job in, in, in the way they interviewed. People thought, you know what I'm saying. And then after that, there was more challenges. We said, fine, we challenge you to a live debate. You've said that apologists don't have the integrity or bravery to go and fully debate you. We said, let's do it. I even said, I'll, I'll set up the venue. We'll get a freaking place. We'll get that all ready. <laughs> RFM has continued with his agreement. He is proceeding forward wanting to debate. Bill does not want to debate. Um, so how this initially started with this challenge, and I often that's what annoys me on social media. So many of these challenges are gutless challenges. They're a challenge in hopes that the person says no because they kind of want to gloat and show that they're big. Um, but Bill is backed out. Now, the reality is I, I mean, I would rather have, if we're going to have a debate with moderators in a live location with an audience, having it filmed and streamed live online, I think it's f- more preferable if it's three versus three. You don't see one versus three debates. That's not normal. I, you don't I, see I just collegiate, think, political, anything. You don't it, see that. It messes up the dynamics, right? Yeah, yeah. Because in one way, it makes it look like we have the advantage because there are three of us versus one of him. And it makes him look like the underdog. Yeah, but in another way, it also puts us at a disadvantage because we have to figure out between the three of us which of us is going to be saying Yeah, what. let's either go one-on-one or else let's go three-on-three. But a basketball game with three-on-one inherently gives the guy with one team player an advantage because if he loses, he's like, well, it was three-on-one, but look, I scored a point, which means I'm better than one-on-three. Yeah, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. And and if he wins, then he's just, oh my, he's not going to win. So I don't even know why we use that as a hypothetical. But you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh my e- even if he did better than expected, you know what I'm saying? Then it's, and, and the thumbnail. You always have to think, and maybe this is just because I come from the world of politics or whatever, right? But what's the thumbnail going to look like? And three young buck midnight Mormons sitting up against the lawyer defending himself. That is the Leonidas thumbnail that everybody wishes they, they could have. Right. The, that That is the, and it's like, no. The Dude, blueprint. I'm not here yeah. to self-aggrandize. Yeah, your boomer fantasy. You the know? blueprint uh, plan changing, right? I mean- when the initial invite, and we still extend the initial invite, and you know we're still working through how we make this work because yeah. it needs to be good for both sides. But remember, the initial invite is we have been ex Mormon podcasters say the the LDS never go on, they never defend, and we said we'll go on. We even extend an actual debate because again, Bill Real, I know you're going to watch this. Our whole relationship has been at the first interaction I had with you, you threw angry insults at me over Facebook Messenger. I fire back. That's how it's been for a couple of years. And this is the first, hey, meet me, be a man, man to man, in public, debate stage, moderator. There is no hiding behind, you know, our, the comfort of our, our, our own studios face to face. Can you do that? You've insulted me a lot. I've insulted you a lot. That's the nature of the beast. Well, That's the nature I of the said, reality. I said famously the infamous... Anytime, anywhere, any recorded format in any overpriced brewery or coffee shop right. of your choosing that, that pretty much mirrored you. So and 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 but the excuse of I can't because I have more uh, I have more views than you. It's like that's not true. Yeah, you and, won't for long if you're backing out of debates. Dude. Yeah. So anyway, we well, I'm, I'm reissuing the challenge. You wanted to debate. We we set up the debate. Come debate in person. That's what men do. Let's do it. Okay. And I. Want to give an update? Hell, on I don't something. even care if it's streamed. If you're, oh, I don't want the numbers. I don't want them to get attention. We don't even have to stream it. Will you debate in front of an audience? Will you do it? And then I, I just want to give a quick update. We're looking at probably the 13th of November. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for. It's going to depend maybe on one of the venues we're waiting to get back. 
Um, we're looking at having Sean McCraney uh, host it at his church, which would just be awesome. Because then it's somebody who is not beholden to either side. Yeah, because we had we had their suggestions of LDS people moderating and stuff. And it's like, how about someone who does not have a rat's butt in this? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, they're separate. They're doing their own thing. I'd rather that person be the one who's moderating. Yeah. And I think he's a great candidate. Um, and I just think, yeah, I just think that it keeps it honest. Yeah. Um, but again, I also want to make clear the reason we are against the three in one, because I know RFM has said to us, Bill's not involved. It's simple as that. Well, unfortunately, I don't think it's as simple as that. We both, we all know how marketing and optics work. Okay. And the reality is the initial extended invitation has been altered. And in that alteration, there is a a major glory to be found in being the underdog one versus three, and B, um, there it looks like the Sanhedrin. It looks like us three versus one person, and so that in and of itself, no matter what content or what dialogue happens in the debate, the optics can be skewed and turned anyway. And I don't think that has that's an debate a debate that's going to have as much integrity. So we want to keep it for three what versus it's three. Worth. Combining all three of our ages, we're still barely past RFM. <laughs> oh, savage. That's true. Uh, combining all three. Oh, yeah. he's got to be 60-something, right? And I'm 30-something, you're 20-something, he's 20-something. That puts us at 70-whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it would need to be him and like a 15-year-old to have the Oh, that's who you're going equal. with it. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, kind of. I honestly He's don't know. He's dad joking it because his wife's pregnant. That's so, true. You're right. Speaking of dad jokes, I want to give Radio also, Free Mormon. He's got some the credit. best dad jokes I have ever. Like, they're it's con- awesome. He's and, got some good. And dad they're so jokes. quick. They're like, but they're good because they don't hit you till a second after. Uh-huh. So he said, and you're like, yeah. Then ah, it's like it's, it's those are the best dad jokes here. Like, like, it makes me so sad that guys like you know RFM are anti Mormon and everything because mm-hmm. it's like you've got solid dad joke game, dude. Well, here's you know, uh, like, I'm gonna actually go in the vouch. I I'm not convinced he's anti Mormon. Yeah, I'm not either. At this point, I'm he's, not convinced he's anti Mormon. He hasn't had like a membership council and hasn't had his records removed or anything. He is technically still a member of the church. And from uh, what okay, I gather, yeah, so is like half these loyal opposition people that are podcasting on YouTube. I mean, I, I'm sorry. The only content he produces is content with people that hate the church, talking about how the church is wrong about things that I have seen that so far seem intellectually dishonest. And he's the one that that laid out the, you're saying it as though there's something wrong when we're saying maybe we shouldn't have PRN stars in the temple, right? So I I, I don't know. looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, right? I, <laughs> Well, basically, I mean, I, I don't know exactly where his spirituality is, and I'm not going to assume. But that's why the side de- of that's why the debate's the important. obvious that I see online. That's why the debate's important because I think when people are face to face in the fourth dimension, talking and debating, you're being held accountable by the, the moderators. You're held accountable by the studio audience. Um, I, I think it changes things, and I think that like, here's the thing. I, I, if I was extended, right. If, if I actually joined to extend a debate against, I don't know, who is a, a Jonathan Streeter, okay? Okay. And I say, Jonathan Streeter will not, is, will not be willing to really, really engage with me. Engage with some of the stuff I have to say. I challenge you to a debate. And he accepts I would not back out. Okay? Yeah. I, I mean, unless I got into a car accident on the way there or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like there'd have to be an extenuating circumstance. And we've insulted each other or... The numbers, yeah. those are those are very weak and just it's, it's just scrubby. It's like, I'm sorry, Abraham Lincoln didn't back out of a debate with Douglas. Yeah. Just because, you know, he said something really mean about me in Springfield. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. uh, okay. Now, I, I got to tell you. Um, <sighs> but again, that's what always annoys me about these guys is I will give the, the Calvinist Christians have major cojones because they always invite the debate in person. They, they're they always like, yeah, let's be men. Well, that's why I don't know what to think. Like, the, I really liked RFM's personality. He seems really funny. And he almost seems like he might actually be somewhat of a joy to debate or at least converse with, right? But I had originally basically offered, uh, uh, in our first conversation, I, I feel a conversation is better. Like what we have with Jonathan Streeter. 
That wasn't a debate. That's true. It was it was I, a conversation in which he was invited on the show and we hash it out. And look, do you want to say that I overstepped when I called you a liar? Fine. We can say that you overstepped when you said Quaku the deceiver, right? We we can hash out who overstepped yeah. what. And I'm totally fine with a conversation with either one of these guys. I, 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 I've softened it before I was thinking like, I don't know if I want to be in the same room with Bill really. It creeps me out, right? But at the end of the day, like, whatever, fine. Come on, come all, I don't care. But um, I don't know. There's something that I feel very uneasy about this. If we do this, we've already changed the format into some kind of formalized. I know Bill Real wanted a Socratic uh, um, debate. And I, now, I want it also, though. I, I think uh, a formalized debate's better. Yeah, be we, we can both. we can nail down what the format looks like. Okay, I, and and I'm but okay. You gotta with show that. up, but yeah. you got you can't back out. Yeah, That's not, not what the, brave men do. Because I think we need to figure out a subject. To but how look, people is it in. going to be entertaining? It's only entertaining if the person you call out shows up. Like there's not a single person that I couldn't challenge in the street. If I say, yo, Kanye West, I challenge you to a rap battle. And then he says, oh, I don't feel like it, but uh, the baby, here you go. No, no, this what? would be, this would be the situation in which him saying, you're not big enough of a rapper for me to care about you would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, <laughs> yeah, it's like this weird, like this guy's been ch- chasing my tail and paying attention to me for years. And only suddenly when like, it, it, it's like, it's like when you're like a big shiz talker, like, you, oh, I can fight. I can fight. And then the guy goes, fine, boxing match, fight me. And you're like, it's crazy. If my Christmas plans really <laughs> doubled, I just, I can't. it's like, no, 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 no. Stop backing out. Don't be a wimp. You need to be tough. If you have been saying for years, going after people, calling them dishonest, calling them a bullies, all number of things, and saying that they don't have the courage to actually debate you, and then they extend the debate, and they're taking care of most of it. They're taking care of it. You don't have to worry. You just need to prep, and you back out for obscure reasons that don't hold up to muster. That's not doing your audience a service either because you are also... Claiming to be this like a big and brave and saying Mormonism is problematic and X, Y, and Z. Speaking and apologists truth are, to power. Yes, and- you're, a tr- you're, you're a truth seeker and apologists are dishonest, all of these things. And when they in- extend an invite to a debate moderated by someone impartial to both of our sides and you back out because of obscure I- reasons that don't hold up to muster, that shows dishonesty and you're not treating your audience fairly either because they want this debate to happen. Yeah. I, I just don't know what to think of it when he like sent that email and then like turned it around, you know, I, I don't yeah, know. You I just, just well, don't. and then also my interest in my interest in this whole debate thing now is drastically waning because it's like, I, I don't mind talking to the two guys that we called out. I pointed straight at the camera, just like I am right now saying anytime, anywhere, any recorded format in any overpriced coffee shop or brewery that you want to. Also because I think it'd be actually kind of funny and ironic to be in an overpriced coffee shop or brewery in Salt Lake City actually having a discussion like we did with Jonathan Streeter, like we did with Kate Kelly, like we just did earlier today with Chris Hanna, another ex-Mormon, okay? So we have shown a good faith willingness to engage with people that don't feel the same with us and have a great funny conversational format, Mm -hmm. right? And when you back out of that, you know, it's... My frustration is it's like, okay, so RFM is still there and he's willing to argue, you know, but now you've changed the dynamics. It's no longer our team versus your team. It's our team versus a, a very humorous, I, I give him that. He's a uh, smart, lawyer, he's humorous. But yeah. you know, this is all just in his favor. Cause like, I love, dude, I love this guy's confidence. Cause on the phone, he's like, yeah, I don't want other people cause other people will be in my way. Like that takes <laughs> hoops, but, and that's funny. All it's right. Awesome. You know, it's, it's totally good. awesome. Right. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's the debate I would set up if I were your PR agency and I were interested in blowing you up. But I'm not. I think you're a dishonest player in a game of very cynical actors. And if I had an hour and a half to give to producing something, sorry, a day and a half to give towards travel and producing something, I would come up here and I'd record, you know, two or three more podcasts with my boys. I do a Midnight Mormons thing. I wouldn't go make you look good because even if you lose and I throttle you, which is what would happen. Okay. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? You know they're going to clip Ellis. that. <laughs> Garden Ellis. <laughs> yeah. This is like when Obama said a shellacking and then, you know, after he got shellacked in the midterm elections, <laughs> everybody just kept playing it backwards and forwards, right? But at the end of the day, saber, ra- saber rattling aside, if I show up and I do plan this whole thing, at the end of the day, just by you showing up three to one, 
you've already won the optical argument. Yeah, and that, that's, that's literally handing out an L. We both work in marketing. We know how, like, like. Yeah. I'm not gonna like put away the reality. I know of how this works, and so again, I just, you know, it. it you don't, you don't change the rules halfway through. Yeah, and so, so I, I want to see even if it doesn't end up being Bill real. Again, maybe I he still, on I'm two different. Other people, I'm like, would that be fine? Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I, I'm not even saying it. it I prefer it be Bill because again, that's how this started. He sent the email blast. Yeah. We didn't. But you don't I start even an did, argument I, with the Pope and then end up getting the Dalai Lama. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I even disagree with you here, Cardin, because um, I I commend RFM for going forward and saying, yeah, let's still debate. Yeah, gave us absolutely. the dates and times they're going to be absolutely. in Utah. Yeah, that was great of him. We know what what city we want to do it in. All those things. Like he is ready, and I commend that. And 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 most people, you know, if I have a debate with a buddy and he backs out, I might be like, ah, you know, but but. He's sticking with it. But, but I think that's commendable. We don't and I really mind like going that. on his show then. Like, just like Jonathan Streeter came on our show, that's fine. Like, I, I'm sure, fine, maybe we'll just go on RFM show and then this whole thing, I guess, goes away. But it should, but, the people want yeah. the debate. They want the, the debate. The debate would be so much more fun. Oh, way more I, fun. I don't know if it would be as constructive. I think we'd actually have a much more constructive time just having a conversation with him like we do yeah. on our normal show. But it also, again... But I, people just want to watch the monkey fight, I guess, I, right? I yeah. consistently have other Christians that are willing to debate face-to-face -face with uh, Zelf on the Shelf said years ago when I challenged them, I offered them 5000 bucks and I upped it to like 10000 bucks to a charity of their choosing to debate live. Mm -hmm. And at Wait, first... Zelf on the Shelf backed out too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were... Uh, at first, they were like, yeah, I mean, this could be interesting. And it sounded like we were going to get a yes. And I was like, okay, let's proceed. And they back out and say, no, 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 we don't want that. We don't want to debate. And I said, okay... 10,000 bucks to the charity. No, no, we don't want that. Fine. Okay. Cr Christian, Christian, Christian. Me, 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 me. Wait, you debate me. Let's debate. You, let's do it. Let's do it. Live audience. They they set it up. It's at UVU. It's at all these other churches. It's great. Another ex Mormon. Let's debate. Sure, let's do it. All right. There's some smack talk like that always happens with podcasters. Suddenly he backs out. I don't want to debate. And, and RFM says he doesn't want to debate. There's It's as simple as that. No more questions. Well, there are questions. Why are... Can we get a couple brave damn ex Mos besides RFM? Are they all that well, no, wimpy? I think Jonathan Streeter was very brave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, but he held his he held his own and he stuck to his guns. Thing that, and, no, but he was also humble enough to admit some things that he thought were going wrong with yeah. quote his side of the argument. And, 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 uh, and dude, and I'm like also, friends with the guy now. But that dynamic like, was I, never. I, I which would is like good. him as a neighbor. I trust him babysitting my kids. He you know? never like, changed the dynamic of the invitation. Right when you say, "Hey, let's come on," we came on, had the conversation. We never said, "I'm gonna have the conversation," but. You have to do this, 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 and this. It was like, what? what? Like, like, you know what this reminds me? The changing of the dynamic is is what annoys me. And we wanted this to be in person, fourth dimensional. Let's do a debate and Bill backs out. Do you remember when the H three N three podcast tried to ambush Stephen Crowder in their debate? No, clue. by substituting know. in Sam Cedar from the Majority Report. It was like one of the most cowardly things you can see happen live online. Yeah, and this kind of reminds me a little bit of that. So um, I really don't know what to do with this. I'm far less interested in some kind of RFM debate thingy because just the thumbnail and the snapshot speaks a thousand words. And if there's one guy over here and three guys over here, this one guy is the winner. And, and even if the, the podcast or the, the live stream starts out with a robust declaration, the bill reel backed out, and that RFM is doing this consensually and willingly because he's a, uh, you know, a man who's going up against David and Goliath. You just make Goliath out of me. Yeah. And, 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 all and most this, people aren't going to watch it. They're just going to see yeah, the thumbnail. That's all going to get skipped. So yeah. I, I think I, we already know how Red X Mormon Red has treated us. We know how they're going to. Yeah. Like they're so going to. Yeah. Here's yeah. what I think would be best. I, okay. I would appreciate if um, we could have RFM find two others, if not Bill Real, then two other people to be involved in the debate. That's what would be ideal for me, I think. Yeah, but so the that we only can problem have... with that though also yeah. is now all of a sudden you're bringing people who are really not germane to the argument. Hmm. You know, this right, this was right. not a whole challenge yeah. between, like somebody else suggests we have Nuanto show up. Uh, okay, is she really just like, it, are you bringing in a football player from a different team that's just gonna sit on a bench so she's filling a body? See, and let's just say she does get into it. Well, to a certain extent, it's kind of like, okay, you know, but you're not the person we challenged. Yeah. You're just not the person we challenged. 
With yeah. that said, we'll challenge you to a. And I'll, <laughs> I'll debate nuance. And I'll debate you. I mean, it just. Yeah. You know, it's but like, okay, it goes around and around. Let's just, I guess, leave it at that. We, Bill, be brave. Be a man. We've got the debate 13th. real life. Come face us face to face. Stop backing out. Don't be a coward. And we've got the 13th, maybe the 12th. We'll let you guys know as soon as we know about the venue and moderator. And we'll work out the details of the yeah. precise nature yeah, of the debate. Yeah, we got security for the event too, man. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. We can get the same security. Chris Hanna, man. Dude, I'm, I'm going to be wearing a straight up bulletproof vest. Oh, me too. Me too, for like, sure. You for have sure. no idea. You that's, have no idea the messages what... we get from the freakazoids that, you know, like. They're bad. And, and, and the sad thing is, you know, that none of the anti-Mormon podcasters have to deal with that. Yeah, like, no. That's well, always I'm, a one-way street. Dude. Like, that's just, we, we, I, we've gotten violent stuff. We're going to be in a... Before the debate starts, we're, I'm not going to be mingling with the audience. I'm going to be in a yeah. safe area. We're going to be in a safer area. Like, sorry, that's just how it has to be. After yeah. you get the message, we get because it's sorry. Like our side does not view violence upon the opposition as punching NAZ. Eyes. But we made there's a meme. You know, yeah, it's, <laughs> there's it's a like meme. There. The height of irony is that the anti Mormon podcasters who have called us ironically, you know, part of the violent patriarchy, are the ones who've been putting up numbers on that Wikipedia page of anti-Mormon hate crimes. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they've yeah. been well, assisting that so title wave. We, we've got to wrap this up. I've got yeah. a show I've got to go get into yeah. right now. So do it, do it. So, yeah. hey, finish this off. Yeah. Quaku. Bill, don't be a wimp. Stop backing out. Let's go. Let's do it. Man-to-man, face-to-face. Okay.